Hey guys, today I'm talking about visible light, blue light, and why it matters. Now, there's been a lot of chatter around the effects of high energy blue light. And I guess on my channel, historically, we focused more on UV light. Now, just to put UV and visible light in context, both are forms of radiation that we get from the sun. But whereas UV represents 10% of the total amount of radiation we get from the sun, whereas visible light represents a whopping 44%, UV is higher energy and has more direct impact on the skin. Or so we thought. But increasingly, we're aware of the role of visible light, and in particular, that high energy blue light part of the spectrum, the part that we can see, that interacts with the skin and also has a part to play in skin aging, but perhaps most specifically in skin pigmentation. Now with the pigmentation story, we know that UVA is really important. So if you compare two sunscreens with different SPFs, but the same UVA protection, they will both equally protect you against the development of pigmentation on the skin in the form of solar lentigos. But it turns out that visible light is probably even more promoting of pigmentation, even than that long wave UVA when it comes to the skin. And this is particularly a concern in darker skinned individuals where that blue light is part of the visible light spectrum at 450 nanometers stimulates the production of something called opsin-3, which drives melanogenesis, leading to more persistent, but also darker pigmentation than UVA. So how do we protect against this new aggressor? Well, I think there's two ways to really think about protecting against visible light. So the first is iron oxide, which is an inorganic ingredient found in makeup, and tinted sunscreen, so it's responsible for the tint, and it both scatters and reflects visible light and also a little bit of UVA. So one of the most useful ways of using iron oxide is in the treatment of melasma. And we know that when you compare individuals who are treated with 4% hydroquinone and broad spectrum sunscreen versus 4% hydroquinone, broad spectrum sunscreen with iron oxide in, that group does much better, both at eight and 12 weeks of use, and it's helpful in maintaining control of your melasma. So the level of iron oxide we should be looking for should be around the 2% mark now, whilst it can be difficult to discern that, not very many brands are transparent about the amount of iron oxide in their sunscreens. Um, I think we shouldn't be shy of thinking about makeup as a way of protecting. And oftentimes the iron oxide levels in foundations will be significantly higher because they're designed to offer greater coverage. Um, so it's one of the few instances where I actually recommend higher coverage products. Then the next interesting ingredient when it comes to potentially protecting against visible light is the fern extract from Central America called Polypodium leucotomus, which was thought to have acquired some interesting self-defense properties during its transition from being aquatic to terrestrial. It provides its photoprotective effect through its anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, and that's thought to be due to a complex blend of polyphenols. And it's as an antioxidant that it's thought to be helpful in preventing the signs of aging, but it's also protective against the impact of UVB rays, which would tend to cause a sunburn. And the most interesting clinical data is around melasma again, where the use of polypodium leucotomus at a dose of 240 milligrams twice a day in conjunction to 4% hydroquinone and sunscreen did better than those with just hydroquinone and sunscreen. So it's likely that part of the way it helps in melasma is through this protective effect against visible light. So that's kind of where we are with the science of visible light and the ingredients that we've so far discovered are helpful. There are some other interesting antioxidants, I think, that will also become useful to us in skincare. But in the end, I think visible light does have its part to play. I think probably much more so through the exposure um, that we have on our skin in an everyday way um, through sunlight rather than necessarily through screens and phones. And I think the main thing is that the ingredients that are helpful are protective for a number of different reasons, and they're easy to incorporate both topically and as a form of a supplement, um, particularly useful if you live somewhere with a hot climate.
So I think they're worth doing. So there you have it, visible eye, an important part of the pigmentation story and an exciting area for new development of ingredients to help us further protect our skin from this environmental aggressor. Bye for now.